Welcome, folks, to Common Ground on the Hills concert series. Uh, we're awfully happy to be presenting this concert, and uh, we're glad that you're tuning in, whether it's uh, in our first broadcast or as it lives on our YouTube uh, Common Ground on the Hill official channel. We're proud to be part of the Maryland State Arts Council Folk Life Network. We're the Mid Maryland Folk Life Center, and uh, we we work on bringing you uh, folk life traditions from our area, as well as um, bringing in traditions from many other places. And that's the case tonight uh, in this amazing concert uh, with four musicians from Scotland. We have Tom Smith, Wadi Lees, Ollie Rigg, and Michael Muir. And it's a, a multi-generational uh, presentation. Tom and Wadi in many ways have been mentors to these younger musicians and um, their use of technology in this is really astounding. Uh, just great, great music. Uh, we'll have a little discussion later on in the concert. Uh, we can talk about how we got to know them. Uh, but I'll just say that uh, Tom and Wadi have been to Common Ground on the Hill a number of times. They've been instructors here uh, where we do our work on the campus of McDaniel College, 25, 26 year history. So uh, be sure this is very important to look for the tip jar and to uh, help support this music. All of this uh, donation money and proceeds goes to the artists, uh, not to Common Ground on the Hill. The tip jar is in the uh, comments in, and also in the video description. And uh, you do not need a PayPal account yourself to make this donation. So uh, please, as, a, as we say, hit that tip jar. So welcome and enjoy this great, great traditional music from Scotland.
focus. A couple of good jigs here for you now is the Humours of Trim or the, the Rolling Wave, as it's sometimes known, and a more than competition called the Sunny Side. And we'll dedicate this set, uh, the Humours of Trim, to Tom and Dorothy, who I believe they visited Trim at their last visit to Ireland. So this is for you. So we'll play that again. trips to Ireland, especially County Clare, and I think that was the inspiration for this song. And when 
when we're next near them to these shores we will steer them to where time moves as slow as the shore beneath the tide Down to the shore Some say they're the finest Most wondrous The kindest I get from the world Who could ever ask for more So lift up in your glasses Your lads and you lasses And let's drink a health To our friends far and wide one is a, um, a shortened version um, of Easter Snow. 
small uh, slow reader that it's um, heavily associated with um, Seamus Ennis. Um, the other two, um, I believe, Tom, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, are probably mid European mazurkas. Well, that's where mazurkas came from, but um, okay. whether these are or not, I don't know. Right. So he's mazurka and, and, um, and, and shoe the donkey.
Wow, it's so great to hear you all again. Um, your music is amazing, and it's 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 really good, uh, Tom and Wadi, that you got some some young blood there to keep you shorn up and shored up, and you know, sort of on the on the beat. Uh, all kidding aside, um, I think the first time I heard Wadi was when we did the BBC Kalain Castle concert. Hey, yeah. Is that right? Is that is that when we first That's right. yeah. crossed paths? Yeah. yeah. And uh, that was a great concert. Um, and it's so exciting to be on BBC, you know, live. Amazing. Uh, they had the, the big truck there back in the days when um, you had to have a truck full of equipment. And, uh, and now Tom will know what year that was. When was that, Tom? That was um, 30 years ago this year, come May. Wow. It was so, May. I remember it well. I remember it well because it was it was the last time watching I get paid for a gig. <laughs> well, you know, that's. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, but on the other hand, uh, at least it forced you into a real, real job. Uh, <laughs> Wadi being a, a police officer and Tom working in a woolen mill. We've already uh, started throwing stones. <laughs> Only a few minutes into this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're just having a big time of it. But that's where, when I first heard you. And, and what was the name of your group then? For Quadrill. You? Quadrill, right. And who were the other members? There's one other. I was just, yeah, do what do you talk? Well, I, at that time, um, was it not Ian Goodwin? Was with us? Yes. Yeah. Fine guitar player. Mm hmm. And, right. and, and there was only three of us to begin with in the early days. Yeah. No, there was four. Well, to start with yeah. Jimmy Montgomery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he left and we carried on as three, as a three piece. Uh huh. Yeah. And um, Tom, your early days of playing, what was the first time you picked up an instrument and uh, started playing well, traditional music? Well, um, uh, left school when I was 15 and started working full time and when I was 16 I bought uh, an old beat up guitar and some one of the other guys I worked with showed me four chords and I could play everything I wanted in those four chords. Um, it was mostly everything that was kind of folky, mostly sort of Irish, the Clancy Brothers, Tommy Makem, mm. then you know, the Dubliners, things like that. And just any song I could think of, I was just playing the guitar. Uh, the Sloop John B, anything, but That's I right. could play everything in those four chords. Four chords and a capo was all you needed then to go on the road. Right. So that, yeah. So, so what what uh, was the moment where you went, ah, the mandolin? When did that happen? I'd been thinking about it for a while, but I'm, when I was 22, I moved to England and I'd been working there for a while. I came home for Christmas and my parents had bought me uh, a cheap Portuguese mandolin, mm. and uh, I just never, I just, I, I, I more or less stopped playing guitar and just stuck to the mandolin after that. So I was 23 when I got my first mandolin. Um, yeah. And, and who, then, when who, I was did, a bit, who did you first listen to on mandolin? Well, I wasn't listening to mandolin players mm -hmm. at all. I just wanted an instrument that I could use to play tunes, play the melody rather than being an accompanist. Right. And um, the mandolin was sort of easiest because I already played guitar. And I worked out that if you, that the mandolin was tuned like the, the four bass strings of guitar upside down, I could work out some chords on it as well. And, and I just started going to some Irish pubs in, in Sheffield, the proper Irish pubs, not theme pubs, pubs where Irish people would go to drink and play music and joined in. And I just was learning tune after tune. And it was, wow. That was about the basis like. Yeah. Wow. And and Wadi, how did you first get into piping? Um, <clears throat> it wasn't until about 1983, I think, or four. Um, and I was in Glasgow at the time, and I was actually working as a young cop in in, in, the, in Glasgow City. And I was still interested in the in the folk music at that particular time. And then I learned that there was an actual um, Ulan Piper living in Glasgow who made uh, the pipes as well. So I, I got in contact with him and um, he made me a practice set. And that was that was the path that I, that I went down and my entry into playing uh, uh, Bull and Pipes. And I just um, developed everything from there, Walt. 
So um, <laughs> it, it, the only problem was that in those days, um, still hadn't um, arrived at the point where we had CDs. We still had cassette tapes and vinyl. <laughs> and uh, right. it was really, really difficult trying to learn music um, when, when you don't have a particularly um, keen musical ear. It's very, very difficult. And, and the manuscript was in short supply in those days as well. But right. it got there eventually. Got there eventually. A lot of tears, a lot of sweat. Well, now, were you playing uh, the Scottish, you know, the Highland Pipes before that? Yeah, I played the Highland Pipes in my local pipe band, Sudan District Pipe Band. Um, so, you, so you had you had a fair amount of experience with the chanter, and well, I was lucky in that respect. So I had the basic grounding and and, and how to finger a chanter. Um, it, it's all you know, it's all very much the, the, the same when it when it's when it's broken down to that sort of bass level. Even yeah. even though you change instrument, you know, you still carry those principles with you. And I was playing at a very early age. I'd started off when I was only nine or ten years old wow. in, the, in the Highland Pipes. And unfortunately for me, though, I, I gave them up too quickly. I turned, turned into a teenager, a teenage monster. And um, unfortunately, I, I kind of walked away from the pipes and, um, and uh, chose other pursuits for a short time. But came back very quickly, came back. Wow. That, that's quite, you know, for anyone who has been around ability and pipes uh you just watch it watch, watch someone play and you go how are they doing that <laughs> you know and and who thought of that That's I the think other thing. who thought of that <laughs> with Watty, i mean tom you might correct me on this but with Watty, there's the part of the story that like i've heard you talk about where you you really you found the oil and pipes and then you spent four hours five hours every single night just working on these things, like just yeah. turning it into your, your thing. Yeah. Tom, you will have done the same. Just like, yeah. it, it didn't just happen. <laughs> like, it, was, it was actually, it was, it was tough, uh, laborious work in the early days because I, I, I unfortunately didn't have a tutor available. And uh, you, I really struggled without, with, without assistance in that respect. I, and, and when I first um, got, when I got my first encounter with a tutor, and, and spent a couple of hours with him. Um, he, he showed me a whole host of things that kept me busy for the next year. It was just, the, the difference was night and day. It was just incredible. But it was so difficult without that tutor there. Really, really, really hard going. But uh, that's all behind me now. <laughs> what, what an amazing instrument. Uh, I'm assuming that when you were learning, you were living alone. Unfortunately, no. I was living with, <laughs> I was living with three other people. Uh, we, we, we were all about the same height as me. A height of nonsense. And it was quite <laughs> difficult going, to say the least. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so I'm interested in how Tom and Wadi met. How did you guys, you know, come across each other's path? Well, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, but I, I, think, um, I think Ian Goodwin introduced us. Um, I, I, might, I might be wrong there. Was, was, is there any truth in that? Yes. Uh, well, what happened is I, I came up to visit Moira for a weekend. That was about 34 years ago. And uh, just kind of stayed. And because Moira was involved with uh, the folk club in air, and Ian Goodwin was involved with the folk club in air, and he played, and um, he was playing with you, and was it Broadstone you were called? Ah, yes. Yes, that's right. And because I was, because I started playing some of the sessions about here, he, uh, he introduced us at that time. So it was Ian Goodwin, yeah. And, uh -huh. and we, so, so, so it was it was at the Air Folk Club, essentially. More or less, yes. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. And you know, I I was just looking. I posted a, a poster of my first tour in Scotland, and I didn't know where I was. You know, when I played the first gig, but it was in air. Yeah, my so first that. gig was in air. Uh, wow, I didn't know where I was. So, so now you have these two lads. Um, uh, like, do they push you guys around when you go shopping, or, you know, they they take you on walks? Or how did all this happen? How did you get youth, uh, you know, in, in, injected here in this? Uh, that, that was that thing? was what that was what his fault. I I avoid young people <laughs> like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> all well, to do with what he. Uh, I, I, I can I can explain it very very briefly. Um, uh, Oliver, who's on my screen, is in the bottom left there. So um, I, I I used to um, go out with his mum Gwen. I used to live with him, um, with her and and Oliver and Anders. 
Um, we all stayed together for a short time when I moved to Isla um, and took up a rural post there. And um, we've just kept in touch ever since. And uh, when Oliver returned and went back to um, the, the, the Dumfriesia and he started learning to play the Great Highland Pipes, as you call them over in America, and he just took it all from there. Um, I met Michael through Oliver, and that's that's how the chain worked for me. And of course, Tom met Oliver through me. When he was three months old. <laughs> <laughs> you brought, uh, brought yeah, well, I think he was playing and, and, and yeah. Irvin, he slept all the way through it, you know. <laughs> well, I have to say that it's, I mean, the energy in this group is really, I mean, you guys sound great. Um, in your concert, um, your part in our, our Christmas concert, people were just over the moon about it. And uh, so I think when this pandemic's over, you, you know, you need to get a, a van and you need to go on the road and you need to fly over here. You know, and uh, I'll manage you. You can make hundreds of dollars. Yeah, <laughs> that's split, split four ways plus the manager. That's ten dollars each. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. I mean, the, the the energy in this group is just great. The playing is fantastic, um, and there's a saying. I don't know if you all are familiar with. It. I'm sure you are, but it's, it's like twenty years a piper makes, um, meaning that you know. Uh, this is not an instrument that you just pick up and play. It's an instrument, like you say, you know, uh, first, it, it's like putting together a lawnmower, right? <laughs> it's like you've got all these moving parts and you have to become familiar with them. And, um, and I sometimes and then, wish we use his pipes for mowing the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is, I mean, I, I watch you all play and go, this, this is really incredibly wonderfully seasoned music and energetic and you know the the hundreds of hours of practice and performance that are represented there are just it, it's just hard to imagine um it's uh and, and i'm sure that tonight's audience is going wow this is really something really something so we're really glad to have you here and um uh, you're, actually, you're not here and I'm not there, but we're all, in fact, no one's anywhere right now. <laughs> we're, just, we're just lost in the ether, but we're looking forward to better times. And I can't wait to get back to Scotland. Um, it's my favorite place on the planet. Um, I mean, there's the scenery and all that, but it's the people and uh, the willingness to, or, the, you know, the interest to talk and to enjoy one another's company is uh, like no other place. I think that's it. I, you know, and, and Tom and Moira's house, I don't know how much time you've, you've had to spend oh, yeah. there, but it's, it's one of the, they're like the epicenters of Celtic hospitality, you know, yeah. whether there's a gig in Garvin or just a chance to catch up, have some nice food and drinks and some tunes and songs. and right. chat. It's, it's like, it's, I guess, as what he pointed out and Tom pointed out, it's been that way since I was very little. And then yeah. we can never get enough of it. And like, Michael and I have, have spent a couple of nights there playing tunes with them, but never enough. You're always like, your mind right. always hearkening back to that last fire and tune and, and chat. And um, yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, but you know, um, we had a wonderful musician on <clears throat> last week, uh, Mary Elaine Jenkins, and she talked about, I asked her, how did you get started? And um, of course she told the story about someone she met uh, you know, a person from a different generation who took an interest in her and showed her, uh, her the, the, taught her how to play her first song. And um, she still uh, is in touch with that person. And that's how all this music happens. I mean, it just gets passed on. There's no way, you know, you, it's nice to have tapes and, uh, you know, or digital resources and all that, but there's nothing like playing with someone else and watching them do it and be in their presence. And this is just, it's, it's so great to see you all. I mean, you know, Tom is obviously, you know, 30, 40 years older than Waddy, and Waddy's 20 years older than you guys. So you've got three. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I know I'm the oldest guy here, so we shall not cast stones. But no, it, it's very, uh, I frankly, very moving to see this happening with you all. And um, we're so glad you're with us. And I've probably, 
yammered enough. Let's, let's have you play some more music and um, maybe we'll have you on this side of the pond before, uh, before another year's up. Thanks for playing. Now you may wonder um, why we're laughing. I'm not going to explain except this is take 17. So we're going to <laughs> uh, try playing a couple of polkas now just for a wee change. Uh, the first one's called the Scatter Glen Polka, which I first learned when I was 23, I think, from a recording of the Chieftains, uh, Chieftains 2. The second polka, I don't have a name for it, it's just one of those knockabout polkas. Um, so we'll try it after the count of four, and we'll see. <laughs> uh, don't, don't, don't count your chickens.
folks. <laughs> a couple of wee tunes for us here. Maybe. Ba bank turf. <laughs> and if we're lucky, the Kaiser. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. task, we can't play and smile at the same time. That's impossible. We're going to try a song now which is from my part of the country originally. Um, this version of it came from a, an old friend of mine called Dave Forrest who put a third verse to it. It's called Carmelad Mill. Two, three, four.
two, two slowest rails, the concertina rail, is the second one. <laughs> and the first one is Miss Thompson's rail. Okay, don't you? One. Originally, were eight verses to this song, but most people only sing four of them. 
And there's also a totally different version of this song and I think it's uh, Odd's Book of Bothy Ballads.
like a bulb of her gallant ship is fluttering in the gale. The given us a pension voice of four pins each a day. And when we reach the skill, never more will have to say. And all around the borders of Evans Green Isle. And when the war is over, we'll return in full bloom. And he'll all welcome home the Inniskilling Dreams. Well, we won't bother waiting for the applause because we're finished now. We'll just go straight to the encore. We're going to play a couple of tunes that we played. They were the first tunes we played when we came to Congrend in the Hill all those years ago. And, and what he'll tell you what they are. Well, <clears throat> the first one is a slow way called Bon and We, translated in English as The Yellow Bittern. Um, my version is. Um, yeah, yeah. A complete and substantial piece of theft and it doesn't resemble the original rendition at all. Um, in fact, it's almost a different tune. But, but I like the wee, the wee version that I do. Um, and Bon and Way. And we'll follow it with a, a hornpipe which we played all those years ago for you as well called Alexander's Hornpipe.
Ich schätze, ihr seid wie, ich werde.